Hi there, I'm Marie Minaris and with me is Tamsin Yeh, Dr. Tamsin Yeh. And we're here at the Suffolk County Farm to talk to you about ticks. So we are sitting here having our tick talk and we'd like to share some of the things that we're talking about with you. We're also going to demonstrate how to drag for ticks in your own backyard. Okay, so these are what deer tick look like. Tommy's got the female, I've got the male. And um, one of the things you notice on the bottom, it's very smooth and rounded. If you find one of these ticks on you, you've just uh, found yourself a deer tick. And um, they have their own set of diseases. They usually quest in, in high grass and they're near wooded shaded areas. You really have to go near these wooded shaded areas and brush up against where they're hanging out. And I think, um, what else would you say about these? Well, it's important to remember that this deer tick is the only one that can give you Lyme disease. Right, the Lyme disease. The yeah. other thing that's very important to remember is the stage of the tick called the nymph, which is very tiny, about the size of a poppy seed, is the one that's most likely to transmit disease because it's rarely noticed before it's fed for more than 24 hours, which is the crucial amount of time it takes to transmit a disease. And this time of year, there are plenty of nymphs out there, so be careful, especially if you're near the edge of the woods, as Marie said, also areas that are popular with rodents, like the edge of a log or near a bird feeder right, or right. a rock wall, mm -hmm. are likely to have a lot of the nymph ticks. The other thing I'd like to point out about the deer ticks is that they have pointy mouth parts, like a pair of needle nose pliers, mm -hmm. along with that smooth rim that Marie pointed out. Yep. Okay, this is the Lone Star Tick. I've got the male Lone Star Tick here. Tammy's got the female Lone Star. And you can see like the bottom has like these little ridges, almost like a little pie crust. These guys are really aggressive. They will hunt you out with your carbon dioxide and they will get you. They're found in grassy areas. Like it, we even picked some up by, by the beach, didn't we, Tammy? Mm -hmm, we, did. we, we were dragging and picked some up at the beach and we're gonna show you how to drag the ticks too. The one star tick is named for the glitter dot in the center of the female. The other, um, things you want to remember about long times is they're extremely round versus teardrop shaped like the other ticks are and look at those really long mouth parts they're almost like old-fashioned candle molds. Now the Lone Star Tick is the most numerous tick on Long Island and all life stages will make a meal out of you. So you have the adults that will snack on you, you have the nymphs and the larvae which will snack on you which we're going to show you in a minute. And larval lone star ticks are often mistaken for tigers, which we'll discuss in just a minute. Now we still are looking at a lone star tick here. I've got the nymph, and Tommy's got the larvae of the lone star tick. And of course, these are blown up, but look at the size that they actually are. Tammy's holding up for you to see, which you really can't see, and that's why we're holding it up. Just to give you an idea of just how small these guys are, they're about the size of a pinhead. The larvae are usually clustered together, and um, I think it's really like this tick basically responsible for the alpha-gal syndrome that you can get from uh, repeated bites from the Lone Star Tick. That's right. And the larvae are interesting because people think they are chiggers, but they're still, yep, but still they're chiggers, but they really aren't. They're larval Lone Star Ticks. They're very tiny and they'll tend to get on you in a clump and your body responds to their saliva, but their saliva shares chemical principles with some of the compounds on mammalian meat. 
And so, sometimes, after you've been bitten repeatedly by these larvae, your body encounters the mammalian meat that you had, like your hamburger, etc., and says, hey, that's not a hamburger, that's tick saliva, and that's why you develop this allergic reaction to mammalian meat called alpha-gal. You won't develop it with chicken or fish because it doesn't have that chemistry, but you will develop it with all sorts of mammalian meats, maybe. If you're unlucky, you will get it. If you're lucky, you will not. So now we have the dog tick. Um, Tammy's got the male dog tick. I got the female dog tick. You can see the difference in this little the male dog tick is like he went crazy uh, one night in a drinking party and just went nuts with himself making a design on his back. And uh, the female dog tick is very nice and neat here. But they both have these uh, serrated kind of scalloped edges on the abdom lower abdomen here, almost like a pie crust effect. And um, they feed on rodents and they feed on your animals and they also feed on you and I believe that Tammy you were saying before that they are responsible for the Rocky Mountain Rocky spotty Mountain mount. spotted fever yeah. that's right a lot of people disregard dog ticks because they've been around forever but you don't want to do that because Rocky Mountain spotted fever which is a rickettsial disease is a very nasty disease and we have had outbreaks uh, earlier in, on Long Island and early 1980s. Um, notice too that dog ticks have mouth parts like blunt nose pliers, so that's another easy way to recognize them. The good thing about dog ticks is that the nymphs and the larval stages don't want to feed on humans, they feed on other things, primarily rodents. So basically, you're going to find an adult on you with a dog tick that's if you do. Yeah. And, and it's always good to, when you're out in the woods, to check yourself as soon as you come home because they, the ticks will need a certain amount of time to transmit the disease to you. So if you're very proactive in checking yourself, that's a good thing. So we're going to show you how to drag the ticks. And all you really need is a pole and a piece of cotton flannel. And Tammy has that over there. You can see she's standing there with the flannel. It's about, uh, I guess about three feet by four feet or two and a half by four feet. That's all you really need. And she's gonna demonstrate how you drag the ticks by just running this cloth along the ground and along the bushes, just like she's doing here. And um, we're gonna see if any of the ticks will cling to that cloth. And then we'll, after um, a few paces, we're gonna turn the cloth over and we're gonna see if we can find any ticks. So if we do find ticks, we're gonna show you them. We're checking now to see if there's anything there. Yeah. We found something. We'll be right there with it. Okay, we have a tick here, and this just goes to show you how super, super small they actually are. This is a Lone Star Nymph, and one of the best ways to pick up ticks off your clothing or on your drag cloth is simply one of these masking tape lint rollers. You just can stick it to the tick, the tick will stick to it, won't be able to get off, and you'll be able to identify it or wrap it up in the tape and throw it away. Now, this tick was, was on the ground and in some bushes, and something to keep in mind that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes is people that wanna treat their property with the exterminators that come to treat your properties for ticks and mosquitoes. We'll talk about that too. Okay, so suppose you got a tick on yourself. You're out there, you're playing around, it's hours and now, go home and find a tick by myself. So what would you do? You want to use my arm for a demo or your arm? It does not I, matter. Okay. Can so these two things you never want to go out without. One is a hand lens, doesn't have to be expensive. Another pair of fine tip tweezers. So we're going to pretend that Marie has a tick right here. Right at that beauty mark. And it's eating 
this way, its head is here, its abdomen is here. I'm going to come in perpendicular to the tick with my tweezers. I'm going to slide the lower blade under the tick, the upper blade across the top of the tick, and I'm going to clamp down on the tick's head as close as I can get to the head. Then I'm going to rotate my tweezers 45 degrees. I'm going to use my finger as a brace, and I'm going to pull slowly and firmly backwards at a 45 degree angle. One part of the tick's mouth parts has backwards facing barbs, so that's the reason they're so difficult to pull out. If you should accidentally leave the tick's head in, what you never want to do is to dig at it with unsterilized tweezers. That will give you a very bad infection. What you do want to do is you want to clean the leftover head and the area where you got bitten with either alcohol, peroxide, something that will dry it out, and then the tick head will dry up and drop out in a few days. If it looks strange to you, or if you can't resist digging at it, or it looks like it's infected, go to a medical professional and have them deal with it. Yeah, yeah, and, and no um, blown out matches to put on the tick to remove no. that, and no Vaseline, that's, no. that's... and no nail polish. No nail polish. No, and don't mm -hmm. flush the tick down the sink or the toilet, because the tick can actually survive that. And then it's three o'clock in the morning when you go to use the bathroom, that tick is going to be waiting for it's you. It's going to be waiting. By the way, your gear, if your clothing or gear has ticks on it after you've been for a walk, the first step is the dryer. Ticks cannot survive the dryer. You can put it on for on high heat for maybe 15, half an hour, 45 minutes, depending on your dryer. If your gear can't go in the dryer without being ruined, put it in a plastic bag and let it solarize in a hot car. Again, ticks can survive the water, so your best bet is to first hit them with the dryer. Sounds good. So what's your opinion about companies that come to the house and offer services to spray? Well, I think it gives people a false sense of security because they think it's one and done or several times and done. But that's not exactly the case because you have animals trafficking back and forth through your yard, deer, rodents, other creatures, turkeys, and they all bring in new ticks to the location after you apply. Depending on what's applied to, it may dissipate after a couple of days and the ticks come back. Or you may apply something and the ticks take cover under the leaf litter so they never come into contact with the product that you're using. So you want to do a lot of homework before you have anyone do that because it's not a sure cure-all. And you also want to remember that a lot of the research that's done with these products, whether they're organic products, quote-unquote, traditional products, it's done in a lab. And ticks respond very differently in a laboratory setting as do the particular products themselves versus a field setting. So you want to make sure that when you look up the research that's been done in a field setting and also there's a control where nothing has been treated so that you can compare those two things. That's a good point. That's a very good point. So some of the gear that you'd want to be wearing when you're going into an area where you know that there's going to be ticks some of the do's and don'ts is, um, for example, you don't want to wear my sh kinds of shoes here with these breathable mesh little spaces because the, the, that little Lone Star nymph that you saw can very easily get through this. Uh, you would want to wear something like what I'm wearing right now, which is like this rubberized garden boot where nothing's going to get into any kind of little meshy hole or anything like that but also there are different repellents out there and different products that you can use to treat your clothing or yourself yeah. there's a wonderful website from the epa that allows you to judge how well your repellent will work and for how long 
depending on whether the research has been done on it. If you type into the computer EPA and repellent, a database will come up and it's something like rate my repellent or find a repellent that's right for you. If you go down to the bottom of that page and click on the link, the whole thing comes up as a PDF. It's not very long, but you can check your product or the one you're thinking of buying by the bottom of the can. On the bottom of the can, there's something called the active ingredient, and that's what actually affects the ticks. And there will also be something called the EPA registration number. You want to look up these two things in that database rather than buying by the brand name. The brand name doesn't tell you what ingredient it is. Now, the ingredients that seem to work very well for Lone Star ticks and deer ticks are Picaridin and IR3535. So if you can, look for those. Um, the oil, lemon oil of eucalyptus works, but it doesn't work quite as long, and there are some restrictions for the age of children that you can apply them to. This is permethrin, and this permethrin is not a repellent. It's actually a pesticide. Yeah, yeah. And Basically, you never want to apply this to your skin. Right. You can apply it to your gear and your clothing gear outside clothing. where there's plenty of circulate, air circulation, allow it to dry, and then you can use your equipment or wear your clothing. You can also purchase equipment and clothing. It's already been treated with permethrin, but it's important not to put this directly on your skin. And again, between understanding that and looking at that database, you should be very well set to select the proper repellent for you. Well, this is really great, Tammy. It's very interesting. You know, I know that like there's there's different brands and it's got like the same product because we checked the active ingredients and and what about once you sprayed your clothes with this, should you wash them separately, you think? Mm, yeah, it's probably a good idea yeah. to wash them separately. And usually after a certain number of washes, you should reapply right. the product. Now, if you buy products that are pre-treated with permethrin, it will tell you how many washes they're generally, or how many wearings they're generally good right. for. Right. Okay. Well, that about sums it up. Thanks for joining us on our TikTok. You guys, be safe, protect yourself, stay healthy, and enjoy the great outdoors. Don't stay home. We've been locked up long enough. Bye-bye for now.